आवो दादी पासे कौन आवे शनो शन शनो यह जो शने हाय से हाय चीज मजा आवे शे दादू जो तो खरा ए दादी सोन का सोन का लुक लुक यार लुक यार अरे वाह Aí a tudo. लाइन सूतो जन हरणा जो फरेश बिंदास पता क्या है यहाँ पे नहीं है गजब आ से टन मारे बिंदास होंगे ना Cameras and phones, hooves and antlers inside the oh, train. Wow. Here at the Bronx Zoo, the headquarters of the Wildlife Conservation Society, or WCS, we have scientists and eco guards working in the field, and zookeepers working right here at home to protect animals all over the world. I will point out animals as we uh, approach them, but I'll need your help. Scientists and zookeepers need excellent observation skills to learn about animals' behaviors and ensure their health. Think about what an animal is doing and what your observations might mean. We have now traveled over 7,000 miles and arrived in Asia. This first area here is called the Pahaha Meadow. We got four types of deer and one type of antelope in this meadow. There's some of the but don't worry, we'll pass that into the meadow later on in the tour. Be sure to slow down the train and point everyone out to you. In the meantime, these uh, spotted deer here in front of the train, those are axis deer. Look at the uh, babies over there, these two baby uh, deer there. Axis, uh, most deer are born with spots and they fade as they age. The axis deer will keep their spots for the entirety of their lives. These other deer sitting here in the shade, those are back trees here. Factory deer are a subspecies of red deer, although as you can see, they're not red. They're kind of a pale gray-golden color. 
Factory Deer's numbers were hard to monitor in the wild due to unrest in the area that they call home. But recently, a WCS researcher was able to confirm that Factory and Deer do still exist in the wild in Afghanistan after not being seen for nearly 40 years. Now, folks, you're going to be seeing a bunch of animals today. A bunch of them have fur, and some of them are still going through the process of molting. Molting means that they're shedding their winter coats. It is 100% natural. It's 100% healthy. It is also 100%, let's say, not that photogenic. I had a guest ask me about a couple of weeks ago. I like to point out our animals are Sambat, Sambat. That's just nature being nature. And speaking of nature being nature, we got a treat for you in our next display. The next animal we're going to see was on the verge of extinction. In fact, the Mongolian wild horse, or Perishevalsky's horse, was extinct in nature, meaning it could only be found in zoos. Recently, there have been some reintroductions of the Mongolian wild horse to several areas of Mongolia and China from herds right here in North America, Asian zoos. The Mongolian wild horses are right here as we pull into their area. Keep your eyes peeled for the foal. That's a baby horse. That horse is only five weeks old as of yesterday. Dude, you gotta sit. The differences between these horses and the domestic horses. You can see it. They got a stockier build, shorter legs, and check out that mane. They got that erect mane, kind of looks like a mohawk. I guess you can say that they are genetically awesome. I'm going to hand it off to Jonathan right now. He's one of our scientists in the field. He's going to tell you some more about the Mongolian wild horse. I'm Jonathan Slad from the Russia and Northeast Asia coordinator of the Wildlife Conservation Society. I believe that wildlife has a place on this earth. My job is to find practical solutions that allow people and wildlife to thrive together. Dr. Travalsky's horse went extinct in the wild in the 1960s. On a recent trip to Kazakhstan, I thought about the wildlife. Wow, we did one. One of the videos they watched was sad. The world needs happy stories. Watch the impossible become possible. To see hope restored. That's what's happening today with Dr. Travalsky's horse. We got our first animals here in 1902, and to date we've had over 50 Mongolian wild horse foals born right here at the Bronx Zoo, including the one we saw today. Now, for the first few weeks, we did not know if that foal was a colt or a filly, that's male or female. After the last few days, it's become fairly obvious that, that we got a little colt in our hands. What's in there? Mm -hmm. Now this area we're still passing, this is still Mongolian wild horse territory. We saw it in the Kaihan Meadow. We'll see it in our next display. We give our animals a lot of room to move around in the they do use every inch of it. They are the world's largest land uh, uh, wild cattle. I'm talking about our gower, that's G gower, also known as Indian bison. Female gower can weigh up to 2,000 pounds, that's as much as a small car. He can stand up to six feet tall, be up to ten feet long. With his impressive size and sharp horns, the male gower can fight off just about anything, even a tiger. And a tiger, can't go when the Bronx Zoo received two female and one male gower from the San Diego Zoo, it took a couple of introductions before all the animals were comfortable. But after a little bit of time, the three new animals fully integrated into the herd, and we have the family that you see today. A family group of Gower can consist of up to 40 individuals and is typically led by an older adult female called the matriarch. So it's vital to maintain a healthy growing herd. Interesting note about the Gower, if you've ever seen a can of Red Bull, hey, that's two Gower on that can of Red Bull right there. American bison, but no, Even Moscow from Antarctica. Now practicing our scientific observation.
as we are now on the lookout for a tiger. Ooh. Tiger stripes provide excellent camouflage, so they're often difficult to spot. We have seen. Even professional researchers will have trouble spotting them in the wild. But I believe I've spotted our female Malayan tiger. We've got Suhana today, right here to the right of the train, right under the track. She's standing right over there behind those bushes. She's not enjoying the heat today, I don't think. There's two types of tigers we have here at the Bronx Zoo, Malayan and Amor. Malayan is the smaller of the two species. Now, tigers are solitary animals, live alone in the wild. That's why you only see one of them in this exhibit at a time. Oh my God. Oh my God. A tiger! Tigers hunt a variety of different animals, but the food inside deer and wild boar. A tiger will gorge itself on a fresh meal, eating up to 40 pounds of meat at one time. A tiger! Where are you? And that's you in the white one. The white hat in the back there, you gotta give me a break. He's standing up. Exactly. You can't hear me, right? Hello? Uh, thank you very much. Wow. See more tigers here at the Bronx Zoo visiting Tiger Mountain. Have a nice Most day. Better than no action tiger. As we bid a fond farewell to Suhana, we'll be passing through the back of the hour exhibit. And then as he passed this tree line here, and let's see if there's anybody we can uh, point out that we missed down below. No. So out there in the middle of the field, you're going to see several uh, red, uh, several light brown animals sitting there in the shade. Those are black buck antelope. Those reddish brown larger deer. Yeah, the deer, deer. There's a couple There's so many deer. Those are Barasinga deer. Barasinga deer are also known as swamp deer because yeah. they'll hang out in the swamps of India yeah. to stay yeah. cool. Barasinga is yeah. 12 feet in the Hindi language. And if we got a look at any of those bucks out there, we'd see. Look, I can see the green people. Now the next animal we're going to see belongs to a white buddy area. He calls them ah. something that looks like a pig with two tusks coming up out of his snout. You've spotted our Bobby Russo. Boo! We are going to see a white boy. Bobby Russo means deer pig in the Malay language. As we pull into the first area here, I believe we have Sprout. Sprout is the younger male. He has an impressive set of tusks. Usually hangs out in front of the train and then comes running out as we pull in. He is not there right now. In the second area, we got Kenneth. Kenneth is an older male and has a fearsome set of tusks. Bobby Russo will use those tusks to fight other males, establish Dom ladies. Bobby Russo hail from the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. Now, do not fret if you were not able to spot our Bobby Russo. You'll have no problem whatsoever spotting our next animal as they are the world's largest land mammal. I'm talking about... Elephant! Son of elephant! Happy can eat up to 200 pounds a day each day and drink up to 60 gallons of water. That looks 1600 pounds. We pay for our elephant using a bath and pedicure. That large tree on the left side of her pool is her elephant sized back scratcher. Now take a good look at her trunk if you can. An elephant trunk's got 40,000 muscles in it and it's an incredible tool. Happy also has a small finger-like attachment at the end of her trunk. With that small finger, she can gently pick up a single blade of grass or an apple. Or she can use all 40,000 of those muscles. And her hand is a big one. Look, I have to control anything. Have a nice afternoon, Happy. I heard of this. I, have, I see the white. And they give, they give so much. Yeah. Yeah. And as we've been a fine farewell, we're going to be on the lookout for another large mammal. You see an animal that looks like it has armor plates for skin, a single horn at the end of her nose. It weighs around 3,500 pounds. Not only are you an excellent estimator of weight, but you've spotted our greater one-horned rhinoceros. Now I have to know we got Kali out today. She's a female. She's at the other end of the exhibit. We'll catch up with her in just a minute. 
today we know all rhinos are highly endangered. Recent estimations have the number to around, around six. Six. seven hundred wild one horn rhinoceroses that survived in India and Nepal. Here at the Bronx Zoo, we care for five greater <laughs> <endangered> <laughs> <one> <laughs> <one> <laughs> Do we have any moms on the train today? Well, think about this mom. You're scared, the female Rhino is pregnant for 16 months. Could you imagine being coming. pregnant for almost it's a coming. year and a half? Is coming. And the baby's 100 pounds when he shows up to the food. Uh, after the baby's born, we'll stay with his mother for two to three years. It takes 14 months. We've had 14 baby rhinos born right here. 14 baby rhinos. As we clear the trees here, we got Kali sitting in the front row. Good afternoon, Kali. I love those ears. Now many people think a rhino skin is... Hey, are you a rhino? Rhino! 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 One of a rhino's favorite ways to protect its skin is to sit in the front row. Why are you going to sit in the front row? this figure for the all-new Animal Chronicles will walk a trail of over a quarter mile featuring immersive eco-sculptures that showcase key to the broad zoo's history of saving animals and connecting New Yorkers to wildlife. Located in Fordham Circle now through September 2nd, there's always something new to do at the zoo. I heard it over there, somebody said it. I will. Folks, in this next meadow, we're going to be again on the lookout for four type of deer and one type of antelope. We'll start with the smallest deer we'll see. That'll be the hog deer. The hog deer get their name because well, they kind of resemble a hog. They're short, they're squat, they like to crouch down low and crawl under things rather than leap over things like most other deer. There's going to be two kind of medium-sized deer out here. One that's a sandy, kind of lighter color. That is the brow antler deer. And then one that's a little darker, has some spots on its back, that is the Formosan Sika deer. Formosan Sika deer hail from the island of Taiwan, gotcha. formerly known as Formosa. Unfortunately, you will gotcha. only see Formosan Sika deer in a zoo. There's one sitting up against the fence over there on the left as we come around the curve. Uh, you will only see them in a zoo as they are extinct in nature. The two yeah, largest species you can look looking for are sandbar deer. Sambar deer are the largest deer species in Southeast Asia. Male sambar deer can stand up to five feet tall. To sambar deer bullets for the cartoon. My name's Sambar deer. Sambar deer tends to live alone. Hey, Rio, drop it up, Sam. Sambar deer. Look right across here as we come before the rock. Yeah, that is Sambar. You'll see some sambar deer sitting up against that fence. And finally, we'll be looking for our club. Nilgai antelope are the largest you antelope guys. species in southern Asia. We have an all-female herd of Nilgai antelope, but they got some distinct markings on their legs right above their hooves. They got these stripes. It kind of looks like they're wearing striped zebra socks. Let's see if we can't catch a glimpse of our Nilgai antelope's striped zebra socks. Everybody's going to come into view once we clear this rocky hill. As you do clear the rocky hill, look to the left there, are several of the male sandbar deer yeah, sitting up there against the fence. The male sandbar deer and our mountain goats are by far showing the worst effects of both. We come down the hill here, we follow the trail to the back, look to the right there, you'll see several of the hog deer sitting up against the fence. And then as we keep going up the hill here, um, this side of the tree, we got some of the brown antler deer, and a couple of the Formosan sea deer. On this side, we have several of our male guy antler deer. They got their legs folded under them. I can clearly see the striped zebra socks on a couple of the ladies. Looking good today, ladies. We got some more hog deer hanging in the corner with some Formosan sea deer and some brown antler deer. And I think there's a couple of sandbar deer also in the corner. Folks, we've come to a stop because I have a red light in front of us. It's a busy day here at the zoo. We got five trains on the track. That means the we'll run to a uh, track that's occupied in front of us, and we do have to wait. That just means we'll hang out here with you. Nilgai means blue bull in the Hindi language. 
And the male of the species indeed does have a bluish gray coat. We have an all female herd here at the zoo. So I usually do not get to that fact unless I am killing time. So I know. I just a my piece. Uh, all the deer you saw today, they have the antlers. Antlers are not permanently attached to the skull and are shed every year. The cow, the mountain goats, and the antelope all have horns. Horns are permanently attached to the skull. They do not get detached unless something disastrous happens. Now it might be hard to spot our next animal. And less than 40 pounds. Yo, yeah, you do have a job. Yeah, you do have a job. You have a job. You have a a job. You Deer, the 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 as we come around this curve, get your cameras ready. We're about to be at the highest point of our ride. 35 feet over the Bronx River. Thousands of commuters cross this waterway every day, but underneath their highways and our elevated tracks, the river rushes along, providing habitat for ducks, turtles, fish, and migrating, uh, migrating birds. Look downstream, you'll see the bridge we came over to start. Look carefully in the water, you might even see now the rocky terrain in this next area is a perfect environment for our next two species. We're looking for our mountain goats and we've got our Himalayan tar and our Mark Everybody's going to be on this hill right in front of the train. If you come around the curve, you're going to get a great view of all of them. Hi, everybody, Ben. You had a good point. I can already see the mountain goats. Oh, yeah, it's on the mountain. The male Mark Horst is in his spot. He's got those long hair around his neck and a chin that kind of resembles your monorail drivers. The female Mark Horst also has a hairy chin, but she does not have that mane of hair, and her horns are much shorter. There are also several kids in these. There's so many deer. to our disadvantage today, but the uh, red pandas are inside. But don't worry, you can see more red pandas here at the Bronx Zoo by visiting our Highlands exhibit. Just a short walk around. There you can see more red pandas and one of the ages. Oh, yeah. Hey, buddy. 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 You heard from some of our animal experts here and in the field and tried out some of your own science skills while on this ride. We hope you've been inspired by what you've heard and seen today. Remember the Bronx Zoo is part of the Wildlife Conservation Society, or WCS. In addition to managing five parks in New York, the Central Park Zoo, the Queen Zoo, the Prospect Park Zoo, and the New York City Aquarium, the WCS also has scientists in the field of more than 300 sites in over 16 countries. Now, no, folks, we are not no, that yet is back at the platform. I'm looking in front of us. There is a train currently occupying the platform. Until that train pulls out, we do have to wait. I want to thank everybody for your cooperation so far. I seriously do appreciate it. It does mean a lot. And I'm going to ask for like maybe another minute, maybe two. We'll wait here. Once that platform gets clear, we'll get you dropped off. 
and you can continue your day here at the beautiful Bronx Zoo. That but in the meantime, we do you. have to wait. Now I'm going to ask everybody to please sit tight. Thank you so much. Real soon. Enjoy the rest of the day at the zoo, folks. Have a good one. Have a good one. It's good.
दादी ने इन्हें देखा ही यूज़
पहले आम सरप्राइज बताओ मेरे भाई ने Okay, mama. 
बार पाचो दादी फोटो ले यासना यासना ए यासना 
यार देखा क्या थी वेरी फोन बंद करो पी चलाओ
Ce mai?